eggplant fam welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Jacqueline this is part of my jungle and if you're not new here thank you for coming back so today I have a video for you that I think and hope will be helpful for both newer plant parents and more seasoned plant parents and definitely like always if you do have more experience feel free to leave your comments down below and if you are more of a beginner definitely recommend going and reading the comments and seeing what other people say so today i'm going to be talking about six things mistakes <laughs> that you should not make when buying plants whether that be in person or online so these are things that i don't know i wish somebody would have told me i guess some of them i already kind of knew to a degree but especially when you're buying more expensive plants if you're not necessarily a new plant parent but you're newer to collecting more like rare and expensive plants then this video is for you because um i don't want you to get scammed i don't want you to be overpaying i don't want you to be making any bad choices so that's what we're gonna do today so the first thing on my list is don't overpay so i know that sounds a lot simpler <laughs> and easier than it is but if you're just getting into house plants, I think it's a lot easier to not overpay because you can just go to the big box store and get things for really cheap. Um, there are other issues with that, obviously, but if you're just starting to collect more expensive plants, one of the best things that you can do is start to learn the market and get to know the market. Start looking at plants online. How much do they usually go for? What is the value of this plant? Um, especially if there are specific ones you're looking for, that's even better. If you have like a wish list of plants that you're looking for, I highly recommend doing your research and looking at what plants sell for online before making a purchase so that you can know if you're getting a good deal or not. Or even like in a plant shop, if you do have a plant shop, that carries more like uncommon and expensive plants you're gonna want to know crash really you know you're not supposed to be on the coffee table oh. anyway <laughs> um, yeah it's really good to be mindful and one of the ways to understand the market value of plants is understanding like what is it that really even makes a plant rare in the first place so a lot of sellers are going to be really quick to just slap the word rare into the title of a plant so that they can jack the price up and that's not a good thing obviously that's not an honest thing to be doing and that's not good for buyers either so sir i'm gonna need you to come down from there lay down and relax so definitely don't fall for the scam of like a rare plant that's not actually rare. So one of the things that's going to make a plant more expensive is if it's just not available, if it's not readily available in the country that you're in, if nobody's really growing it there and it needs to be imported from somewhere else, it's going to be more expensive. So that's why tissue culture has kind of just like changed the game. Uh, people are able to access these plants more easily. People are growing them in mass and naturally the prices come down. The rarity factor comes down on that plant. I air quote rare in case you didn't know because um, if these plants were actually legitimately rare, then we shouldn't have them in our homes. Um, they should be left alone in their natural habitat. But the word rare just really means like on the market, like how available is this plant? How easy is it to get? So I equate rare with hard to find and usually expensive. So that is why I air quote. 
rare. <laughs> so when I use the word rare, know that that is what I mean. So um, another thing that can make a plant rare or hard to find is if it's really difficult to propagate or it's a really slow grower. Um, things along those lines. There are some plants that are always going to be a little bit more pricey just because of that. Because it is difficult to mass produce it, the prices are just going to kind of stay where they are. So if a new plant hits the market and people are like, oh, look at this new rare philodendron summer glory, for example, when it first hit the market, they were like, oh, it's this new rare variety of philodendron. Well, yeah, it's rare because like one person created it somewhere and not a lot of people had it yet so people were charging a crazy amount of money for it but this plant grows like a literal weed and it's impossible for that value to stay where it is as more people are growing it propagating it mass producing it the prices have plummeted you can get one for like 20 bucks now definitely educate yourself when it comes to how the plant market works, what actually really makes a plant rare and difficult to find versus when somebody is just putting that label on there to get more money out of you. So don't overpay for your plants. That's going to be your biggest mistake and something that I promise you, you will regret and feel crappy about looking back on it when you're seeing them sell for a fraction of the price a year later. I'm also kind of stuffy, so I apologize if you can hear my congestion. I think it's just allergies. But the second thing on my list, mistakes that you should not make when you're buying plants is, especially if you're new to buying like more rare plants, um, buying unrooted plants or cuttings. So this is totally fine if you have a lot of experience rooting those type of plants. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to buy unrooted cuttings. I do it all the time. Um, but even in the store, even if you're just at the big box store and you're like, oh, this is a nice pothos, pop it out of the pot if you can look at the roots. Do not be fooled, <clears throat> Costa Farms and end up buying just like four or five cuttings shoved into a pot that are lightly rooted. You definitely don't want to be wasting your money on a plant that is not established. Unless it's disclosed to you that the plant is not yet established and, and you're aware of that and you, you decide to purchase it anyway. So definitely even if you're in store, always check the roots if you can and online obviously that's not an option if you're buying like directly through a website but when i'm in live auctions and sales now i do take note of like hey they showed me the roots on this plant like a good seller is gonna tell you if they can't show you they're gonna tell you at least about the root situation in the pot because they want to be transparent with you so that you know exactly what you're paying for that's not going to be the case with every seller. So definitely be aware. And when you get plants in the mail, check the roots as soon as you get them. Um, if there's any issue with the roots and the plant was sold to you as an established plant, that's a problem and you need to let them know about it. Cuttings, I just don't recommend because cuttings fail. You can do everything right and they can still fail. Like it's just... It's just a numbers game, to be honest with you. Like even people who have been doing it for years and are mass producing plants and propagating plants will tell you sometimes they just fail. And some plants do it more than others. Um, some plants don't do it at all. It really varies. But in my experience, sometimes it just happens. Propagations just they don't want to root they don't do well they might rot like even though they're in the same exact environment as the rest of the cuttings that you took you might have two that just for some reason are like not nah, not feeling it um this even happens in water propagation for me sometimes i'll be rooting up some fresh cuttings of my philodendron micans and i'll go and check a few weeks later and half of them are going crazy with roots and the other half are like meh sort of and then some of them are just like 
not rooted at all and totally dead and falling apart. So there's really no guarantee with an unrooted cutting and I do not want you guys to pay a whole lot of money for something that has no guarantee if you don't have a lot of experience rooting that particular plant. Number three on the list is kind of like two combined, but they're similar, so I wanted to put them together. And that is not thoroughly checking your plants at the store. Like I said, check the roots, but also check for pests and pest damage. So getting to know what different pest damage looks like or fungal damage, diseases, viral stuff, like there's all kind of stuff that can go wrong. Learn how to recognize those things in store so that you don't bring home something bad. Obviously, you can't do that if you're buying online. And then the rule of thumb is to always isolate your plants. So I think a big buying mistake that people do is just like assuming that the plant is fine and going and putting it away with the rest of their plants. So I do my best. I have like separate bins that I'll keep plants in that are newer if I'm like a little bit more weary about it um most of the time i just leave them in the bathroom <laughs> for a couple of weeks until i know that i've i've sprayed them down i've checked them i will continue to clean them once a week while they're in there and just make sure that you're not bringing in something that's going to spread to the rest of your plants because especially if you are just starting to invest in more rare and expensive plants that is going to be absolutely devastating devastating like nothing is worse than the first time you have like thrips or like a spider mite infestation um or something along those lines where the they can actually really do a good amount of damage in a in a pretty quick period of time and they spread really fast. So definitely thoroughly check your plants. Obviously, if you're buying them in person and then if you're buying them online, thoroughly check them when you get home, but also isolate and treat them for any plant that you bring home. So I hope that makes sense. That makes sense, right? You guys know. You guys know that already, but um, it's definitely a big mistake that you can make if you're newer to collecting plants even if you don't have an expensive plant collection, you definitely do not want to be damaging all your plants or killing some of your plants accidentally by bringing in something. Um, it's okay if you don't notice. That is why we isolate them so that we can be a little bit more cautious. And most pests have a life cycle of a few weeks, so it's definitely a good idea to just hold them back and make sure that you're treating for anything that could be on there. The fourth thing on the list is something that I think a lot of people do and don't realize that maybe it's not a good idea and that's repotting your plants right away. So if you buy them in store, online, whatever, it's, it's a bit of a traumatizing process for them. They're gonna go into a little bit of shock coming into a new environment. If you buy them in person, they've probably been sitting in ideal conditions in a nice humid greenhouse or a shop that has humidifiers and grow lights and stuff like that. You're bringing them into a different environment, even if you are trying to have a similar environment. It's just, it's still different. Like, it's a different space and they don't necessarily love that. So, repotting them can also be really stressful and cause a plant to go into shock. So you really don't wanna do those two things back to back. It just creates like worse odds for your plant. Like you're already taking it from where it was and putting it somewhere new, which is gonna cause a little bit of stress and then repotting it is going to cause even more stress. So with some plants, honestly, it doesn't matter and with some plants, they're gonna be fine or they need to be repotted pretty badly. Um, I still do my best to try and wait at least a few days, like give them just a minute to chill before completely uprooting them and messing around with them. Even plants that I get that are maybe like in moss or something but are fully rooted and they're ready to come out and go into something else, I still give them some time to acclimate to my environment before I go 
fussing around with the roots. So definitely don't repot your plants as soon as you bring them home. There's gonna be exceptions to that, obviously. Some plants are gonna be totally fine if you repot them right away, but if you are newer to this or if you just bought something pretty pricey or rare and you really just don't wanna risk anything, I would hold off on repotting it. So I got some plants that were shipped to me semi bare root and I left them in their little ball of plastic for like two weeks before I repotted them and they're perfectly fine they're very happy um I just didn't want to put them through like a whole bunch more trauma so uh yeah definitely wait to repot your plants if you can uh, mistake number five is one that's more for like online plant shopping especially places like Etsy um look for the reviews not reading reviews is a bad idea. Um, a shop that doesn't have any reviews should be a red flag. A shop that doesn't have um, a lot of good reviews obviously should be a red flag. But if it's like a private seller or something along those lines where I, you know, I buy a lot of plants on Instagram through people, um, it's really more of like a word of mouth thing. Um, or you can go on YouTube here and look up because I review the way that my plants are shipped to me from different sellers all the time and so do other people. So definitely read the reviews if you can and if there aren't any reviews, ask around. Ask your plant fam friends, <laughs> um, ask in your Facebook groups, check Reddit threads, whatever you need to do to see if that is a reputable seller before you go and spend your money. Number six and the last thing on the list is to research the plants that you're buying. If you're not researching the plants and looking into how to take care of these plants before spending a whole lot of money on them, um, that's a problem. I'd say that's a mistake. Even with the cheap plants, even at first, the girl, <laughs> I can't even tell you how many plants I bought from Home Depot that were like five dollars that I ended up killing because I had no idea what it was or what it needed and I don't recommend it whether it be a five dollar plant or a five hundred dollar plant it's not fun to spend money on something and then have it die <laughs> so definitely research the plant I always say look at where it comes from look at its natural environment and that is how you're gonna know how to best take care of it. I mean, if it lives in the jungle and you know that it wants humidity and heat, if it lives underneath other plants, then you know it doesn't want bright light, things along those lines. So definitely don't only do your research into like the market value and how much the plant should cost, but make sure you know exactly what that plant needs, other people's experiences with that plant and all that good stuff before you spend your hard-earned money on something that you're gonna kill. <laughs> so that is it for these uh, tips, I guess, or things that you should avoid doing. Um, I hope that you found it helpful. I hope that you had fun hanging out with me. Definitely add to this list down below if there are any things that you think I left out that people should know. Warnings, don't make these mistakes when you are buying plants, especially if you are just getting into buying plants, whether that be house plants in general, but especially if you are just starting to dabble in the more expensive stuff. I do not want you to get discouraged by having a bad experience. So that's it fam i hope that you had fun hanging out with me today if you did you should give this video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me there is a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam get yourself some perky perks i have a members only video coming out this week and um if not there's a super thanks button if you want to super thanks me, everything is appreciated. I literally cannot do this without you guys. You know that. I love you so much, and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.